when these powerful people engage in their satanic rituals and the, and the major players in this global cult are indeed heavily involved in Satanism, something I've been writing about in detail uh, for a long time, you can see the parallels to ancient practices. Look back to the ancients who were sacrificing people to appease their gods, the Greek pantheon of deities like Zeus and, and others. Even the New Age concept of the Great White Brotherhood, a hierarchy of supposedly enlightened master souls, viewed from an objective perspective, they're all referring to the same foundational framework. So who or what are these gods that have been historically worshipped and sacrificed to? They are the demonic, demonic consciousness forces existing in the lower levels of the astral dimension a vibrational realm so close to our physical dimension that it affects and interfaces with our reality, yet remains outside our perceived visible spectrum. When ancient peoples made sacrifices to their gods through ritual practices, they were actively interacting with and feeding these non-human forces on the lower astral planes that are ultimately orchestrating um, both the simulation we're experiencing as well as steering the overarching direction of human civilization and society itself. If we look at the nature of this global cult operating in the world of observable effects that have become increasingly overt and undeniable, especially since the COVID situation was brazenly deployed, we can visualize it as a sort of spider's web uh, encompassing the planet. At the absolute center is the metaphorical spider itself, those primordial non-human forces, those gods of the uh, lower astral realms calling the shots behind the scenes. The strands of the web closest to and emanating directly from the spider at the core represent the most exclusive and secret societies on earth. These are the key gatekeepers and occult managers with the biggest overall picture and direct connections to the forces they knowingly serve and interact with, which they revere as gods, albeit parasitic and predatory ones. A few thousand people at most scattered among these all-encompassing secret societies know and um, consciously work with these gods of the lower astral spheres. But these interdimensional trickster forces don't merely exist in quarantine on their own plane of reality. No, they are able to directly impact and interface with our material world by utilizing and possessing certain human vectors and conduits. The phenomenon of demonic possession, spoken of extensively in ancient texts and cultures, is simply the exercising of these entities' ability to fully override and hijack a human vehicle displacing the human's consciousness and using the possessed individual's body as a lived avatar within our physical realm. I have uh, personally witnessed this process of possession in my travels and the resulting manifestation is alarming to say the least as the subject's persona and traits become entirely overwritten and overridden by the possessing entity. So, while the key operatives at the peak of the cult hierarchy do knowingly and willingly serve the forces of the lower astral, there are many who have been subsumed and overwritten by those same forces further down the cult pyramidal hierarchy. These lower level operatives become essentially biological vessels through which the demonic orchestrators work their agenda. Visualize the cult structure again as that spreading web around the core, core spider. In the strands immediately around the spider are the most secretive of secret societies. Then further out are the secret societies that are known of, but whose true role in the cult agenda remains obfuscated to the masses. Groups like Freemasonry, the Inner cause of the Knights Templar, the Knights of Malta, Opus Dei, the Jesuits, the infamous Skull and Bones at Yale, and many more. The masses remain blissfully unaware of their existence and motivations. 
From there, you reach the level of operations I call the cusp, where the cult's hidden societies and machinations begin interfacing with the seen world of public governance, institutions, corporations, and organizations. This is where you have uh, groups like the Bilderberg meetings, uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, the Trilateral Commission, uh, the Club of Rome, and many of the modern think tanks and NGOs, many funded by frontmen like Soros, whose roles are to inject the cult agenda into the realm of visible institutions and social systems in a subtle but deliberate manner. The Club of Rome in particular was created in 1968 uh, specifically to exploit pressing issues like environmentalism, and weaponize them as a means of ushering in internationalist solutions and centralized global power structures. The entire anthropogenic climate change industry stemmed from the work of this group in service of the cult's objectives. At this level of the cusp, um, we see the, the cult web strands stretching out into the worlds of government, government agencies, banking, corporations, Silicon Valley, Big Pharma, and into authorities and regulatory bodies that are supposed to be protecting the public interest, but are ultimately just tentacles of the cult itself. Entities like the WHO, the CDC, the FDA, and others. If you aren't aware of the existence of this cult web infrastructure, everything seems random. Organizations, Corporations, governments, authorities, all appear disconnected and pursuing separate, isolated agendas. But once you see the web, the dots all become connected pieces of a centralized, unified agenda, being string pulled from that unseen core of primordial parasites focused on enslaving all of humanity. This cosmic culture, functioning through this model of penetrating and subsuming every key power center on earth through a Masonic-like web of interrelated secret societies, semi-secret groups, institutions, and corporations represents one of the greatest existential threats to the sovereignty, freedom, and conscious awakening of humanity. Their methodical agenda of entrapment has spanned centuries, slowly tightening the web's strands in preparation for the final phases of a globally centralized technological control grid system to permanently subsume mankind under their dominion. However, their occult metaphysics and ritualized aspiration to commune with these demonic forces of the lower astral planes represents a fundamental violation of universal principles of sovereignty and non-interference. In their arrogance of thinking they've transcended their finite human forms by serving these negative entities, they don't realize they've been manipulated into becoming the very instruments of enslavement for not just humanity, but all of creation in our locus. Thus, their agenda for totalitarian control over the beasts of the material realm and the centralization of all power, wealth, and knowledge under their cult network must be dismantled by those of us who realize we're, we're infinite, sovereign, and co-creative forces of the cosmos itself through uh, awakening to our true capacities and refusing to empower their archonic energetic system. We deprive the predator forces at the core of the cult's web of their source of energy and power over us on this plane, exposing their fear-based consciousness virus for what it is and consciously embracing our interconnection and reverence for the unified field of love uh, underlying all creation is the antidote that alchemically transmutes and collapses their control system from within. For consciousness untethered by fear or limitations imposed by false models of reality, is the most powerful force for transformation in any realm. We need only remember who we are 